violence occurs during the People's Democratic Party PDP Southwest Congress and how bad is the Nigerian economy and what is being done to fix it. All this and more on Plus Politics. I am Mariana Cole. As representatives of or your state are being accredited for the People's Democratic Party PDP Congress, armed men numbering more than 150 invaded the hotel where the former governor of Akiti State, Ayo Dele Fayoshi, was lodged. The hotel was invaded uh, reportedly by armed wielding or unwielding thugs in more than 10 buses. They are suspected to be members of the National Union of Road Transport Workers in the state. The thugs were said to be blocking the entrance to the Congress venue in order to stop the delegates from gaining access. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Dr. Tukumbo Pierce. He is a PDP chieftain. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Pierce. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, let's quickly um, verify this information. From what you know, can you explain to us if there was yeah. any disturbance yeah. Um, at that hotel and did you hear uh, of uh, the former governor being attacked or escaping um, with his life? I left the Congress venue about uh, an hour ago and uh, throughout the night before we never heard anything like this. Uh, at the Congress venue the media who I was there, never mentioned it. Nobody, uh, no delegate, no observer, no nobody ever mentioned anything like this. So I was surprised when you called me and asked me. So I called people at the venue and I asked them if they heard anything as such. Nothing like this. I don't know where this news came from. We have had a very peaceful and organized uh, Congress. Uh, when uh, Fayoshe himself came to the Congress and addressed the Congress, he said that he was ready to accept the result whether his candidates lost or won. He said, it was just as if he was echoing what Governor Markin himself said that this was a, a, a family affair and there will be no losers or victors. So if there had been any threat to fire shade the night before, somebody at the venue should have heard. And coincidentally, I went into the Congress as an observer. And for most of the time, I was sitting in the stand of equity. I sat next to the chairman, the state chairman, and the spokesperson of of uh, Fayoshe. And no, I mean nothing like this. So this is just uh, some media propaganda to attract attention to himself. Okay. Nobody attacked Fayoshe. In fact, I can tell you the only only sign of violence that uh, visited the Congress was when Fayoshe arrived at the Congress venue. He came in with about 15, 20 armed uh, civil defense uh, staff. And when they wanted to go into the venue proper, into the hall, they were stopped by the police. And one of them refused to leave. He wanted to force his way through and cocked his gun and nearly started a riot there. And the police uh, stopped him, they pulled him out, and they restrained him from entering the venue. So Fayoshe went into the venue by himself, and his armed escorts were left outside. Okay. That's what happened. 
Okay, my next question obviously is why would, like you said, I want to quote you exactly, you're saying that this is a media propaganda by the fire she, um, by Governor Fayashi and people in his camp. But before that, let's go to um, the, the information that was uh, taken by press men um, from all the candidates, um, both uh, candidates who are vying for uh, those positions in the Southwest. Let's start with um, Eddie Olafeso. Um, let's hear what he had to say, and then I'll come back with that question. So far, so good. We started from a storm yesterday when the entire uh, uh, city was invaded, but uh, somehow along the line, the uh, security operatives have done their bit to keep this place calm. And we are appreciative of the fact because the, 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 the most significant thing we must uh, recognize is that this is a family affair. This is PDP, and competing with one another is one of the cornerstones of democracy. So it shouldn't be an issue for us to vote for and for others uh, uh, to participate. I'm excited that this is happening, and I pray to God that it, it, it will, as it's, it's, as it's starting very well, it will end uh, very well too. So, of course, from the beginning, he, he did not necessarily sense any form of tension, but he did say that the police had tried to keep the place calm. Does it mean that there probably was room for tension to happen where people in, in any way agreed where the people who were already out for trouble? I mean, because in his statement, he said the police has tried its best to keep the place calm. Look... You talked about 150 armed people attacking somebody in his hotel. What has that got to do now with uh, uh, the um, uh, roll calls yes and no? noise and uh, extra activity at the gate when people are trying to come into the venue? There were thousands of people outside trying to get into the venue. So there was a lot of uh, uh, hustle and bustle at the gate, no violence. So what are we talking about? Did they did say anything about violence? Well, I asked, a, I asked a simple question. You probably did not understand my question, but let's keep it moving. Um, so let's um, look at um, Eddie's profile. Of course, he's been um, um, immediate past zonal uh, chairman Southwest in the PDP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's yeah. examine his candidacy. Um, a, a lot of people have said that he is obviously in the camp of the former Ikiti state government, uh, governor uh, as he's in the running for this position. Um, why mm. do you think, because you started off by saying that this was a media propaganda, why would the former Ikiti state governor want to cause a media uproar or put out a story as you have claimed that is somewhat false? You're saying that no such thing happened. Why do you think he would want to do that? Of what benefits would it well, be to him? I don't know. All I can tell you is this. The fact is, throughout this process, uh, Arapaja and Governor Makinde, they wanted to have the Congress last month. Okay? March. And it was it was a uh, fire she and a deal officer that went to court to stop the Congress. So who is more interested in having the Congress? Is it a uh, deal officer and fire she or Makinde and Rapaja? So why would anybody go to harass him except that he just wants to create impression? Who is afraid of him? Nobody is afraid. They want him to come to Congress. They begged him to come to Congress. They begged him to have this democratic process proceed. So why would they go and harass him in his hotel or create any situation to stop the Congress? Does it make sense? Interesting. I'm going to ask you another question. Hopefully you will be able to answer me. But let's go to, uh, let's listen to Arakwaja and what he had to say. Apparently both of them uh, seem to be on the same track. But when I come back, I want to ask you a very interesting question. Let's take that clip. You see, my first priority is this. All the chapters of PDP in the Southwest are sharply divided. You have to bring ourselves together. We have to be one big family. Because, I mean... I mean, if you don't work together, we can't, we can't see anything. I mean, if you look at it, before that was between 2003, there about, we were controlling five states out of six. Today, we have only one state. So something must be wrong. 
there are so many factions in PDP which we need to bring together. So we must speak with one voice, not a matter of being the chairman of the party, no. So what are you being able to achieve? Arakwaja there has been former deputy governor of your state and of course he is in Governor Makinde's camp. But uh, both men sound like they want to unite the party, they want to cement and, and fill in all of the cracks in the party. But one would wonder why there's been so much, you know, tussle and drag between the former governor of Ekiti State and Governor Makinde of your state. Is this really about the candidature? Is this really about that position? Or is it about is it a war between godfathers? You know, we are having a pretty pop uh, reception. I can't hear you. I don't I can't hear you. I don't know what you're saying. I'll take the question again. Can you hear me now? Okay, go ahead. Just speak so, slowly and a little bit clearly, please. Okay. Well I just did say that both candidates sound more like they want to unite the party they want to bring the party together they have recognized that there are cracks in the party uh, and so they're both saying they want to unite the party but there has been a push and shove and a drag between the governor of Oyo state and the former governor of Ekiti state and i'm asking is this really about the candidature is it about this position or is it a fight between godfathers and some tussle for power well, I think they're both linked, directly linked. The governor of Oyo State is the only PDP governor we have in the zone. So his interest is that the candidates that will come in now to will be people that he can work with and people that can help him to strengthen and empower the zone. You know, the governor of Oyo state is only governor of one state, as it is now. Unless people are elected into the office in the zone, chairman from one zone, secretary, for instance, in this case, and so on and so forth. So that these can come together to help the governor to build the party in the zone. But you so said, that is what this is all about. But what that... Fayoshe is fighting for is beyond me because he still wants to control the zone and is not a governor. So anyway, at, at, the, at the Congress today, Fire, she said, and I hope you get that statement directly very soon, if you don't have it already. He said that Governor Makide is the leader of the zone and that everybody wants Governor Makide to succeed and that he hopes that after this Congress, everything will be peaceful and everybody will work together. That is coming from Fire, she himself. Because hmm. there is no reason, it makes no sense at all, for people to keep opposing marking the But it's a, it's, a, it's a democratic process. Okay. Some people want Olafesor to be the chairman of the zone, and uh, other people want Arapaja to be the chairman. So we go to a peaceful election. Whoever wins now will help the governor to, uh, by the way, the governor also said that if Olaf Esso wins and uh, the other candidates at uh, Fire Chief Support come out as victorious, he has to work with them. Okay. They all belong to him, he said. They are all still working for Southwest, and he is still the leader of the zone as the only governor we have. Okay, Dr. Pierce, you did mention that um, Governor Fire Chief cannot be leading the party because he's not a governor. But then I'd like to quote something that um, former Governor Fayashe said. Um, I want mm -hmm. to quote him directly. He did say that, um, allegedly, that um, the governor of Oyo State is trying to lead him instead of the other way around. And he made reference to the opposition, which is the APC, and asked a question that goes, can a minister Fashola um, be the leader of a party when there is a Tinubu in the party? 
So please help me understand what you meant by he cannot lead the party in the zone because he's not a sitting governor. Is there a written, um, is there a written word or constitution that says, or maybe just a passage that says you have to be a sitting governor in any political party for you to be the leader of that party? <laughs> You're asking me who is the leader of the party in the zone. The current PDP governor or the ex-governor from Ikiti. Is that what you're asking me? Well, you said, I'm, I'm asking you what you, you said. This, you said that he cannot be, that he's trying to be the leader of a party when he's not a sitting governor. So I'm asking, <laughs> is it written somewhere? Is there a code in the party's constitution sense, that says that you have to be a sitting listen. governor this, to lead the party? This is convention and common sense. Who is going to be the leader of the class? The person who is the head of the class or somebody who used to be in the class? Answer the question yourself. Okay. Huh? So as we speak right now, I'm just getting reports from the venue of the uh, Congress. A reporter of ours who's in the field is reporting that there's pandemonium as we speak. Um, as opposed to the fact that earlier on it was safe, everything was good, but right now there seems to be pandemonium. Sorry, I'm going to have to take you away from what we were talking about. But he says that right now there's pandemonium at that Congress. Obviously, this means that there's going to be a halt in activities well, that are going on right now at that Congress. Well, I am not at the Congress venue anymore, so I cannot speak to that. I will call and find out what is going on. Uh, after this interview. Okay, so let's go back to the Congress. Let's talk about the processes involved in um, someone emerging at the end of the day. Um, um, Governor, former Governor Ayafashi also raised an alarm earlier on saying that um, he feels that the ballot papers have been tampered with. And he did ask um, Mr. Uche Sekundus to sign off on every single ballot paper to show some form of fairness and, you know, a level playing field. Um, did that happen? So, listen, listen. I have never been rude to the media, but I have to tell you, you're asking me very foolish questions. <laughs> Why so what are they does foolish? it mean? You're telling me I'm sorry. somebody's saying... I'm sorry if you feel that this question is foolish, Dr. Pierce. No, there's a process in place. Dr. Pierce. The, 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 the Dr. Pierce, can you be on. calm? Is Hold on. I'm sorry if you find this question stupid, but can you give me a stupid answer if you think it's stupid? I'm asking a simple question. A governor raised a llama, a former governor raised an alarm about listen, the ballot listen, papers. It is your place as a party man I to explain to us venue, what the party's position like on that, that issue know, is. Listen, Do not take offense, please. Can you answer I don't my know question? I where you got your information from. I'm coming from the venue. Mark Inder spoke at the venue. Fire Shell spoke at the venue. They hugged each other. They agree that this is going to be a peaceful I'm sorry, that's not the and I harmonious asked you, process. What you're telling me now never came up at the Congress. So I think so I don't understand where you, you're coming from. Sir, Dr. Pierce, you need to calm down and listen to my question. I did not ask you what happened today. I said he raised an alarm before the Congress in itself. If, you do, if you're not privy irrelevant. to this information, you could have that just said is that. irrelevant. Why is it irrelevant? Because... because it never happened at the Congress. They have resolved all those issues. Oh, uh, well, Everything that well, now you're asking my question, sir. They resolved before they agreed to have the Congress today. Okay, but you have just answered my question and you could have done that instead of us going around in circles. But finally, um, let's look at the issue of a level playing ground. Um, now that there's pandemonium, um, what do you hope to see at the end of the day. I know you have left this place. I know that you are on your way home. It's very simple. There's a Congress going on. Well, Delegates are there. The candidates are there. There's going to be voting. The, the, the deputy governor of Benue is the chairman of the Congress, the chief returning officer. Before he started uh, voting, he said, look, go and look at the ballot box. Empty. He showed it to everybody. He said, now, can we begin? They said, okay, let's begin. So the process is transparent and democratic, and it's going on. 
So whoever wins, as the governor, as the Mackinder said, and Fires himself said, good luck to the winner. May the best person win. Thank you very much, Dr. Pierce, for speaking with us. We appreciate Thank you. It. All right. Well, we'll take a short break and we'll try to get in touch with our reporter on the field right now. As soon as we can get him, we're going to continue this conversation. Stay with us.